When Secretary Blinken was recently here in Israel, we had a candid conversation. I said I deeply appreciated the support the U.S. has given Israel from the beginning of the war. But I also said something else. I said it's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. Israel, America's closest ally, fighting for its life, fighting against Iran and our other common enemies. Secretary Blinken assured me that the administration is working day and night to remove these bottlenecks. I certainly hope that's the case. It should be the case. During World War II, Churchill told the United States, give us the tools, we'll do the job. And I say, give us the tools and we'll finish the job a lot faster. You're not going crazy, and no, that wasn't a deep fake. That was Israel's war criminal prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, actually attacking President Biden for supposedly withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. Biden put his entire re-election campaign and American democracy in jeopardy to support that murderer's genocide in Gaza, and this is how Netanyahu repays him. By throwing him under the bus publicly and... By insinuating that the genocide that he's doing is being prolonged because President Joe Biden isn't giving him what he needs to finish it. And by the way he said finish it kind of made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because he's doing a genocide. So I don't think it's unreasonable to look more into those words and what he means by it. But I mean, by the way, this is all a lie. And something tells me that this public denunciation of Biden by Netanyahu is a political ploy to either help Trump or or save his own ass in Israel, but I would love to see the look on Biden's face after watching that video, because he must be absolutely flabbergasted. I mean, with friends like that, who needs enemies? But to that I say, you reap what you sow, Biden. Remember when we all called for a ceasefire at the beginning of all of this, and Biden's press secretary said that those calls were repugnant? Yeah. And he also said that there was no possibility of a ceasefire towards the beginning. And now he's desperately trying to find a way out of this because it's hurting him politically. And he knows that it's hurting him politically. But he won't do what he needs to and cut off the weapons. Yet, he's still accused of doing what he refuses to do anyway. This is such a bizarre situation. Oh, and both Republican and Democratic Party leadership, by the way, invited this monster to speak before a joint session of Congress. Great idea, Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer. You know, if it wasn't already painfully obvious, Netanyahu doesn't like Biden, and he's really hoping that Trump wins in November. So it's interesting, I guess, to see Democratic Party leadership join Republicans to prop up the war criminal who's trying to get Trump elected. That's something that I think we should all not let just kind of fly by the wayside. It's kind of important. But I'm sure Democrats think that they're playing 4D chess or something, but I promise you, they're not even playing checkers. But let's look at the specific claim that Netanyahu is making about Biden, because it's even more comical when you dive into the details. What he's saying is more absurd when you learn specifically what he's referring to. So ABC News reports, President Joe Biden has delayed delivering certain heavy bombs to Israel since May over concerns about killing civilians in Gaza. However, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Tuesday that those 2,000-pound bombs are the only weapons under review. He told reporters that, quote, everything else is moving as it normally would. Right. So it's as we all expected. Now, remember, those 2,000 pound bombs were held specifically because Israel went into Rafah, which was supposedly a red line for the Biden administration. But after Netanyahu brazenly crossed that red line, the Biden administration still didn't want to cut off the supply of weapons like he should have. But what he did do is put a pause, an administrative pause, on those 2,000 pound bombs specifically to minimize the amount of war crimes Israel could commit in Rafah. I mean, we've given them enough weapons to last a lifetime so they can still do ample war crimes in Rafa, and they did. But as Secretary Blinken said, everything else has moved normally as expected. So the ongoing supply of weapons and bombs never stopped, but Netanyahu is mad because he wants the big bombs too. That's literally all this is about, and he's now lying about the Biden administration to get what he wants once again. And he just told us that Blinken told him they are going to give them the big bombs that they want. So I think that what we're seeing here, this is my speculation, 
is Netanyahu is basically trying to expose the Biden administration by showing us all of their cards, which puts pressure on them to do what Netanyahu, to do what Netanyahu wants because they pause the big bombs to save face. But Netanyahu is saying to all of us in English, by the way, hey, the Biden administration has been lying this whole time to both of us. This administrative pause was just them saving face and pandering to the far left in the Democratic Party who's against genocide. Now, that's what I think Netanyahu is doing to try to get Biden to give him the bomb since we all now know that he was going to do it anyway. Not a big surprise. But this also activates the Republican sycophants of Israel and cues up attacks on Biden for Trump and kind of confirms our suspicions on the left that this administrative pause was nothing more than a smokescreen. It's a disingenuous move by Netanyahu, but a savvy Machiavellian play by him. He's saying, not only am I going to violate your dumbass little red line in Rafa, but you're also going to give me the big boy bombs that I want while I cross that red line. Now, at this point, the only logical response from the Biden administration would be to respond by saying, okay, you know what? Fuck you. If that's how you want to play, and this is how they should actually have the conversation too, by the way, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I mean, Biden should say, if that's how you want to play, guess what? We're done covering for your sorry asses. We're done defending you domestically and internationally. And that administrative pause that you're complaining about has now been extended to everything, including funding. That would be the logical response if we lived in a normal world. Hell, that would have been the logical response like seven months ago. But we don't live in a normal world. We live in an insane world. And the prospect of Biden cutting off all weapons to Israel is still inconceivable, even at this late date, right? In fact, Biden was asked recently about whether or not he'd cut off weapons uh, or funding specifically to Israel. And watch how he reacted and what happened to the person who asked this question. And I know you're a typical press guy. You're grabbing me in front of this all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And I trust you as far as I throw your phone. I can I have a good arm, man. I'm sure you can. I can throw a long way. But my point is this. Yes. I have made very clear to the Israelis what they have to do mm -hmm. in the near term. If they don't, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is want. the U.S. going to cut off funding? I came because Thank usually you, you tell me I have a nice suit and you didn't comment you. on my suit today, so I don't feel a little offended. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Thank you. Can you step back in, sir, please? Thank you. I'll take that as a no. Yeah. So time and again, this administration has bent over backwards to appease Netanyahu, and they've given him every single thing that he wants. They refuse to hold him accountable domestically and internationally. And Netanyahu responds by spitting in Biden's face and throwing him under a bus. At this point, it's just embarrassing for Biden. Like, I feel embarrassed for him because he just keeps getting played by a bad faith actor doing a genocide, but refuses to change course despite learning that this person is a bad person. He's a monster. And Netanyahu is able to get everything that he wants in terms of weapons and ammunition and funding, yet he's still pushing for Donald Trump. When is Biden going to wake up? I mean, it's it's... It's perplexing. I don't know what else to say. Uh, this weakness from Biden is humiliating. And there was never a reason to unconditionally support a far-right fascist like Netanyahu in the first place. But at this late stage, supporting him is just downright fucking insane. In fact, the opposition leader in Israel, Benny Gantz, who recently resigned from Israel's war cabinet, which Netanyahu ended up dissolving, by the way, confirmed what we already knew, that Netanyahu doesn't even care about the hostages because Gantz told an Israeli interviewer in Hebrew that Netanyahu actually blocked a deal to release the hostages for political reasons. And this was always obvious. By prolonging the war, Netanyahu prolongs his own political career and perhaps delays corruption charges. So he has every incentive in the world to keep this genocide going as long as possible, and Biden has every reason in the world to stop it as soon as possible. But yet Biden, this whole time, has basically taken a you lead, I follow approach. When this is a client state that we're talking about, like I don't want to sound like a Western chauvinist, but... Israel is a client state of the United States, objectively speaking. We are the global hegemon. And yet, Biden, like a little bitch, is taking orders from Netanyahu. But even after Israeli opposition is telling the world Netanyahu isn't to be trusted, no shit, we have nothing to say to that. 
but it's not just about Netanyahu, to be clear. He's collaborating with extremists and terrorists that serve in, in his government, individuals like Ben Gavir and Smotrich. But for some reason, that hasn't gotten the Biden administration to wonder if it's smart to still arm and fund these far-right fascists who are doing a genocide. Maybe there's some historical examples of us doing something like that that didn't quite turn out well for us. Perhaps we should learn that lesson from history, you know, but who am I to say? We live in an insane world, so expect insane things to happen. But here's how the State Department spokesperson, Matthew Miller, responded to the question of whether or not we should support people in government who are basically proudly doing a genocide. I mean, Smotrich, Ben Gavir, these are psychotic people. So why are we still supporting them? Look at the response. You talked about the dissolution of the Israeli war cabinet, said this was an internal matter, but it's not an internal matter if it affects uh, who is in the direct line of decision making over the use of US military assistance and US weapons, particularly in relation to this war. And we know uh, it seems very likely now that the ministers for national security and finance will be a far uh, more significant part of that decision-making process. Does that concern you? We ultimately judge the decision that decisions that um, the government of Israel makes, as we do with other governments, on the policies, the policy outcomes those decisions produce, not on the people making them. That's true. No matter who is in the government, it will continue to be true. But these are people you've repeatedly criticized for, I think, what you call destabilizing rhetoric for, you know, effectively what are their values. One is a convicted supporter of terrorism. Another is openly called for the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. So if these people are now, you know, in a, a direct line of decision making over the war in Gaza, surely that's concern for you. So those are people who have always been in the cabinet. And we have made clear when they take actions that we disagree with, uh, We've made that clear publicly, and I can tell you we've had some very direct conversations privately as well with the senior gov um, senior members of the government of Israel about those policies that we think are uh, unproductive, not only to the plight of the Palestinian people, but to Israel's security. Um, ultimately, though, uh, it, it is not for us to pass judgment on who ought to be in the government of Israel or who ought to not be in the you government of Israel or, or, in, in, in that, in that, or into the cabinet. That's just not a decision for the United States to make. You can have we, don't, no, hold on. We, we don't decide yeah. who is in the cabinet of any other country. That is a decision for the people of Israel to make. Is that so? The United States doesn't decide who's in the governments of other countries, really. I think that the people of Chile and Iran and Iraq and in many other countries might have something to say about that claim. Now, let's just except for a moment let's pretend rather that they actually believe that they don't but let's pretend for sake of argument you can still choose whether or not you supply weapons and funding to those governments that you disagree with ben gavir and smotrich they are functionally nazis and the policy outcomes they are producing is a genocide but yet he says that they judge governments based on policy outcomes which is such a bizarre thing to say considering the fact that the outcome here is genocide you're inadvertently telling us that you're okay with this outcome. And you must be, because you're funding it. But it's just, it's so sad to see the mental gymnastics and the tap dancing all at the behest of Israel. Only to see Netanyahu respond by saying, fuck you, give me the big bombs now, goddammit. It's wild to me. And how long until Biden caves again and gives them the big bombs? It's just so frustrating to know that even after Netanyahu publicly threw Biden under the bus here, we all know Biden is not going to change a single thing. Former Republicans were more harsh on Israel, including Ronald Reagan, because as Shrita Parsi explained in a piece for The Nation, quote, in 1982, President Ronald Reagan was disgusted by Israeli bombardment of Lebanon. He stopped the transfer of cluster munitions to Israel and told Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin in a phone call that this is a holocaust. Reagan demanded that Israel withdraw its troops from Lebanon. Begin caved. 20 minutes after their phone call, Begin ordered a halt on attacks. We're talking about Ronald Reagan. That Ronald Reagan. The demon. Even he was like, this is too far. But he's not alone. Because also, George H.W. Bush, he drew some boundaries and there was punishments for Israel not listening to him. Daniel Morans of HuffPost explains, Bush's showdown with Israel in 1991 over the terms of U.S. loan guarantees serves as an illustration of what a more even-handed U.S. approach to the conflict could look like. Bush withheld the loan guarantees until he was satisfied that the money borrowed with U.S. assistance would not go toward Israeli settlements in the Palestinian territories. Quote, Bush established consequences for bad behavior and he got results 
said James Ogby, president of the Arab American Institute. It can happen again. At the very least, progressives see Bush's actions as a useful reminder that renegotiating U.S. aid to Israel is not an extreme left-wing agenda. Right. So don't tell me that Biden can't do this because he's going to be attacked by Republicans because he's already doing everything that he can for Israel. And they're still saying he's abandoning Israel. So ignore them and just do what's moral, what's right. But I mean, the point of these articles here is to demonstrate that, believe it or not, it can be done. Biden can do what Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush said, which is something I wouldn't say in any other context except for Israel. Don't do what they did on any other policy. But when it comes to Israel, maybe learn a thing or two, right? Biden has a lot of leverage that he is choosing to not use. But when you establish the precedent that you have no red lines, even though you say you do, and you'll never abandon Israel, and you say that publicly, and you send them the message that, you know, everything they do is permissible, then, of course, they're not going to listen to you because you already said they can do what they want. And they know that you're going to let them get away with anything. So why would they change course? There's no repercussions for bad behavior. So they're not going to change. It's why Netanyahu feels so emboldened to publicly attack the administration literally funding his genocide because he's mad that the bombs that you're sending aren't big enough. It's so wild to me. This reminds me of the show on MTV called Sweet 16. Does anyone remember that? So it was a show about these entitled spoiled brats who would have these lavish Sweet 16 birthday parties thrown by them, uh, thrown for them by their rich parents. And they would act like little fucking tyrants and throw temper tantrums if they got a Porsche, but it wasn't the proper color. And they'd freak out, they'd call their parents' names. And what always struck me about this show is how the parents were just fine with this, right? These teens would verbally abuse their parents and the parents were just like, I'm so sorry, sweetie, I'll try to do better. I mean, they created these monsters. They just rewarded that kind of bad behavior when they should have threatened to cut off these kids, stop buying them all of these luxurious things and say, no, until you learn to be a better person and appreciate what you got, you're not getting shit. Apply that here. That's what Biden has done with Netanyahu. He has created a fucking monster. He's given him everything that he's wanted, supported and defended him repeatedly. But despite all of that, Netanyahu's throwing a tantrum because... The bombs aren't big enough that Biden is sending him. Insane. Just what what, do you, what else do you say to that? That's, that's insane. Biden needs to do what his predecessors did. Discipline him. Treat him like the spoiled brat that he is. Make it clear that actions have consequences, especially after this genocidal child just threw you under a bus for the whole world to see. If Biden doesn't change course after this, then he will literally never change course because he has been publicly humiliated again and again and again. And now Netanyahu is basically taunting him, saying, hey, Biden, fuck you. Send me those 2,000 bombs now. Thanks. And what, Biden's just going to do it? We all know he will, but this is kind of a great time for Biden to say, I'm pulling the plug. I can't support this anymore. But that's wishful thinking because we all know not going to happen. You know you know the, you know the thing, thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.